My name is William Abraham. I'm the president of Real de Banjul. Please keep watching Sportslink, originally from the Gambia. Welcome to Sportslink, and we're still here at the Flourish Hotel, right here talking to some members of the Nigeria Under 23 team. And uh, I'm pleased to say we're currently joined by uh, the media officer of the football team, who happens to be none other than Mr. Tim. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. And, uh, You're welcome. And uh, our first question would be um, you, You've been with this team uh, through and through, and you know all their ins and outs. Um, uh, can you please let us know, as a media man, all the negative. Uh, aspect or all the negative stories that have been written on the team or about the team how true are those reports because sometimes someone out there will be there and uh, all what their motive will be is to see that the team fails and start writing bad stuff or bad news and uh, you know we are even aware that you're playing that according to some reports you're playing near they crashed and you had to stop in Ghana or, or all whatnot can you please clarify all those rumors and uh, you know set things straight for us well, if on this job you don't have negatives, you can never have positives. As long as you have negatives, you must have positives. And so we expect the positives to come, we expect negatives to come. All we need to do is to manage them. Some persons are not informed, they don't want to ask questions. And when you don't ask questions, you can never get it right. And then when you leave people, when you give people the opportunity to guess, you also open your doors to such, uh, such negativities to, to happen to your team. But by and large, uh, when you're managing a team like that of Nigeria, where there's so many interests and so many emotions, you expect such things will happen. So I'm not, I'm not surprised about it. It's a, it's, all we need to do is to be able to manage to manage it. Yes, we, well, we, the picture of the plane crash is not as bad as they painted it. We were in the plane. Yes, they we're landing, they had, they had the tire. Uh, the tire got bad. We're taken off again, they had some challenges. The pilot was experienced enough to call off a trip and land back. Of course, we took about 20 minutes on air because he had to explain to us that he needed to exhaust, he needed to burn us on fuel so that he would land safely, which he did safely. And and here we are in Gambia enjoying ourselves and enjoying our, our camp. Okay, and uh, you guys have been here for about three to four days, and uh, just like we've been speaking to the coach. Um, We'll be playing some test matches uh, here in Gambia. Can you please let us know your opponents? Well, the only one I know I, I'm very sure of right now is in the Gam Gambian uh, under 23 team. team yeah. the, the other two are two club sides uh, who we hear are, are, are playing in the continent, uh, which will give yeah, us. Yeah, we are told that you you will be playing uh, Real Banjo Football Club. Yeah, I think I think I think we heard about that one too. So. For us, any team that comes, as good as good as we all we need is we need test matches and good test matches, and these are good test matches. Okay, as the mouthpiece of the federation, or as the mouthpiece of also millions out there in Nigeria, and um, uh, what will you tell them is going to happen inside the camp, and how are you guys preparing for the tournament that kicks off on the 28th next next week? We're preparing, we're preparing very very well. The stories that you hear about indiscipline here, indiscipline there. Coach is just trying to stamp his feet to, a, a, to take away all form of discipline. Nobody is bigger than a team. Football is not like athletics where you run 100 meters or 200 meters. But sometimes, even in athletics, you need your partner when it comes to relays, and football is like a relay. You need everybody to be. So when you're not on the same page, then no one on the same page will go. That aside, the other players brought in here, Will and Hattie, except uh, Victor Simia, who was down with malaria, expected because he's been actively involved at the under 17 World Cup in Chile. For one month plus, he's been he's been so stressed up. So of course, respect him to I mean, to take a break. Okay, and talking about uh, Victor Osimhen as the mouthpiece of uh, the team here in Banjul, um, don't you think uh, this media coverage on him, particularly signing for Ajax, Tottenham, or Arsenal, or all the reported big guns in uh, England, don't you think that has kindly affected him or slightly? We are asking about him. We've not put him in the spotlight. We've kept him behind. I'm very sure if you come to our trainings, if you don't, if you don't ask who's Victor, do you know who Victor is? He's just like every other player on the team. Yeah, because he's nearly two million Gambians have <laughs> actually had the chance to watch him on the, yeah, on the screen. Yeah, and he's just like last. every other Nigerian, and he's a small boy, so of course he's giving his elders respect. And so nobody, Victor is just like every other player. On the team. Nobody, no special attention to him. He does what others will do, and and right when he when he when he when he when he fell sick, of course the doctors had to say rest him, and he's rested. 
And so I said, no, yes, if you don't manage him properly, you're going to get such problems. And so the coach, you don't forget that we have a coach who has played football to the highest level. He knows what it tastes like. He's handled under 17 in my country. He's handled under 20. Yeah. He's handled the Olympic team before now. He has any super egos. So he has all the cases of team in the country. So he knows how to manage his players and their ego. And so I don't think that he's, he's, rather he's, a, he's, he's been an asset. To, all, to the boys. Okay, and finally, um, you go into the country, into a country that the, is not an English-speaking country. They virtually speak French, and as the media officer, because you'll be arranging interviews or post-match interviews for the coach. And uh, how are you prepared for that task? Because it will be difficult. Not difficult. Uh, don't forget that my coach speaks French. Okay. He played in France. It was in, in France. But then, don't forget too that if you want to interview a French-speaking coach. If you, if you don't speak French, you won't answer. If the, the onus is on you to learn English, and not also to learn French. Yeah. So the pressure is on you to, to speak to speak English. And so if you can't speak, he speaks to the press when the need arises. If the need doesn't arise, he doesn't speak to the press. And so when it comes to the, the normal calf interviews, of course there are interpreters that will do the interpretations for everybody. So. We don't, we're not going to run into problems. Okay, and speaking of the press, and uh, we are glad to say, you know, you gave us permission to speak with him, and uh, that we are very much grateful. And uh, we wish you and the team all the best of luck that you need in Nigeria, and hopefully see you guys at the Olympics in Brazil. That's practically where I will stop it. It's the Gambian TV from interviewing the coach for, for, for <laughs> yeah. people who have been yeah. so friendly with us. Yes, so, yeah. so it's it's it's, our, it's, our, it's we're duty bound to do it. That's Thank right. you very much. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Yeah.